Hi, boys and girls. Today, we're going to be listening to um, Lesson 6, From Water to Land. And you're going to be learning about another group of animals called amphibians. The word amphibian means living in two lives or living in two worlds. You can probably predict what you think it means living in two worlds um, as it applies to the amphibian animal group. Now, one way to understand the text I'm going to read today is to think about the connections to the text. You should always be thinking, how does this event in the text connect to the next one? Or what are the steps in the text? And authors share information in a few different formats. I want to show those to you now. So these different formats that authors write and the structure that they put their writing, their sentences in, are called text structures. And when you're talking about text structures, you're talking about how does the author organize the information in the text. Now, there's different ways that we can do it. We can, or we can write paragraphs that explain when an event took place, and that would be a time paragraph, and we would see words like before, now, later. Um, but the one that we're going to focus on today is sequencing. So as you can see here by the highlighted boxes, today's text is going to have some sequence in it. So it's going to explain the order in which events happen. And we're going to be listening very carefully for these words that are the clue words that this is a sequential text. First, next, then, after, last, and finally. And we'll be stopping along the way and gathering some information from the text in, its, in the structure of this sequence. And we're going to Put that information on this page that I should have photocopied for you. Um, and as you can see, it's got um, those sequence words here, and there's a place for you to be drawing pictures also. So we'll be stopping and pausing and gathering our information to save for later. All right. So as I said, as you listen today, keep an ear out for those clue words and have this uh, activity page 6.2 ready. Here we go. I'm back, everybody, and today I've brought some excellent slides of Tabitha Toad and Paolo Piranha to show you so we can compare how scientists classify them in the taxonomy of animals. Tabitha is not a fish, but she and Paolo are similar in many ways. It's true that Tabitha and Paolo don't look very much alike, but as the saying goes, you can't judge a book by its cover. When classifying animals, scientists often search for similarities as well as differences. One similarity between Tabitha and Paolo is that, as you know, they're both members of the animal kingdom. You've learned that scientists classify animals as cold-blooded or warm-blooded. Does anyone know into which category Tabitha belongs? Do you think that her body maintains a constant temperature, internal temperature like yours, or does her temperature adjust to her surroundings like a fish does? Yes, her body temperature fluctuates. So she's classified as a cold-blooded animal like Paolo. That's another way that they're similar to one another. They're both animals and they're both cold-blooded. Now take a closer look at Tabitha Toad. Can you tell just by looking at her whether she's cold-blooded or warm-blooded? No, but once you learn a little bit more about her habits, you will understand how scientists determine that she is cold-blooded. You know that scientists also classify animals according to whether or not they have backbones. Think about what you learned about Tabitha's backbone. Hmm, yep. There it is, just like you and Paolo. Tabitha has vertebrae, a column of bones, all down her back. Who remembers what scientists call animals with backbones? Right, she's a vertebrae. So Paolo and Tabitha are both cold-blooded verte vertebrates. Does anyone remember any other fish characteristics? Hmm. We'll make a prediction about which characteristics Tabitha shares with Paolo. Do Tabitha and other toads have gills, scales, or fins? Do they lay eggs or live in water? These are rather tricky questions because 
Toads belong to a group of animals that change during their lifetime. Their bodies change, their habitats change, and their habits change. I'm going to share a lot of information with you today, so get ready for some miraculous surprises. Before we go any further, I want to introduce the name of Tabitha Toad's group of animals. Some of you know it already. How do scientists classify toads? Yep, they are members of a class of animals known as amphibians. Most amphibians spend part of their lives in water and part on land. Toads love the water, like all amphibians. Tabitha began her life as an aquatic animal, living in water. She spends most of her time on dry land now. In fact, she loves the woodlands, but every spring she makes her way to a small freshwater pond in the wetland. First, she will lay her eggs. Just before I took this picture, she laid a few thousand eggs in the shallow water. Toads must, must lay their eggs in water because their soft, jelly-like coverings can easily dry out in the air. Here, come and see. Okay, boys and girls, we're going to pause here. I think you heard me in the last paragraph that I read say first. So let's go to our activity page. And now we'll put in what happened first that we just heard Tabitha does. Let's write this down. So I'm going to start my sentence first. Let's see, you can see it a little better. First, and then we put a comma. Um, she will lay her eggs. Okay. Oh, and then the period. You might want to pause the video while you finish writing this down and then we'll carry on with the with the story okay on with the show most of the eggs will never hatch can anyone think why this is so there are many ways that eggs can be destroyed by becoming a tasty meal for a predator or being washed away in a flood or drying up if there's not enough rain. Next, a few hundred to toad eggs will hatch into tadpoles. Tadpoles have gills just like fish and use their gills to breathe underwater. They're herbivores and eat tiny aquatic plants, but they're in constant danger because other fish can swallow them whole. Hmm. Did you just hear me say next? and then give the next event in a tadpole's life, or in a toad's life. Let's go back to our activity page, and we will put in, let's see, what did I say happens next? Well, next, a few hundred toad shorten this down so it doesn't go over my picture space. Toad eggs will hatch into tadpoles. Yeah. I'm going to move this up so you can see it a little better. Good job. Okay, on with the show. Then the tadpoles will morph or change into very different looking creatures, young amphibians with very different habits. This transformation process of changing appearance from one stage to another is called metamorphosis. Skin has covered their gills and they grew lungs for breathing air on land. And tiny legs have also started appearing. Let's pause here. Did you hear me say then as a sequence word in the text? 
Let's write down the next sentence on activity page 6.2. Okay. Then the tadpoles morph. It's a little shorter. Then the tadpoles morph or change into very different looking creatures, young amphibians, my details are getting kind of big, let's make it a little smaller, to young amphibians, there, that looks a little better. with very different habits. Whew, that's a lot. I have to write small to squeeze that one in. Okay, on with the show. Frogs and toads are the, oh, then Then the tadpoles will morph or change into very different looking creatures, young amphibians with very different habits. Yep. Last, young amphibians will grow into adult toads. Those amphibi amphibians that survive to adulthood will be hopping and crawling around on land, searching for food, just like Tabitha. Plant life will no longer interest, in, interest them, and instead, they'll snatch up bugs, worms, and spiders and slugs with their sticky tongues. Most adult amphibians are carnivores. Some of the toad's larger relatives, like bullfrogs, even eat small mammals and birds. The world's biggest frog is the West African goliath frog. It is the size of a pet cat and can eat other frogs, baby crabs, and even snakes. Okay, remember I said last as a sequence word in the text. Let's write down that last bit of information that happened. Okay, so then last, young amphibians will, better make this a little smaller, will grow into adult toads. Okay, on with the show. Frogs and toads are the largest group of amphibians because they have so many of the same characteristics. Many people have a difficult time telling them apart. The main difference between them is that a toad's skin is a bit drier than frog skin. Remember that although together they make up the largest group of amphibians, they're not the only group of amphibians. Check this out. Most scientists generally agree that amphibians evolved from an early group of fish with lobed or fleshy fins hundreds of millions of years ago, long before the dinosaurs. Scientists continue to study fossil remains trying to figure out the exact way in which the slow change occurred over a long period of time. Well, boys and girls, the next time we meet, you're going to learn about the way scientists classify snakes like Anna Anaconda. I'm going to give you a hint. Remember when I said that salamanders are often mistaken for lizards, but that lizards belong to a different group of animals? Well, Anna belongs to the same group as lizards. Does anyone want to predict the name of that group? Wait and see if you're right. For now, I want to congratulate you all on being such good sleuths or detectives. Any taxonomist would love to have you help in classifying Earth's animals. See you soon.
Okay, boys and girls, that's the end of our read aloud for today. Make sure that you took some time to fill in these uh, three, four pieces of information and then go back through and draw pictures to go with each step of the metamorphosis sequence from a fro of a frog or toad. Eggs, tadpoles, young amphibians, and then an adult amphibian. I'll see you later.